My preface to me saying anything is to remember that what I do is say things that are opportune in order to sell things to people. So uh, um, what I do is I tend to uh, tune it in to the very specific requirements of whichever brand we're talking to and whatever their bigger brief is. So I don't have I, I, I generate theories as I go along and some and when they seem to make sense for a certain client, I'll say them whether or not they're fully true or not. They certainly got uh, germs of truth in them. Right? That's why I would hope. But um, if you what shall I just carry on and ro roll on? You, you, you know, you were talking about the future and what what, what I oh, would. Hold on, hold on. Tell us who you are first and where you are in the world. Oh, I my name's Phil Howarth and I am a creative director at uh, a company called The Mill, which is a production company best known for its visual effects and CG, pro probably the leading provider of computer generated VFX for the commercial advertising industry. We also have a sister company that does movies, but we don't do movies. We don't do episodic. We do uh, so many of the TV ads that you see would do um, the, the the special that have special effects of which uh, they're, uh, um, you know, not just uh, CG, but um, all kinds of effects with it within film. We that's what we've famously done. But because we are, are sort of, at, let's say, at the forefront of. Computer graphics, it has not stayed in the linear realm. And I work in a department called the experience department, which is. Um, we we create for the same kinds of clients experiences that might be augmented reality or virtual reality or location based installations that feature combinations of those technologies, sometimes as small as a, an, an augmented reality filter like a face filter on, on, on Snapchat and sometimes as big as um, a uh, live concert in the metaverse. So we, 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 we run the gamut of, of all that kind of stuff. It's, it's like a sort of new world in that we're creating new forms of, they're not entertainment, but they are probably my premise is that they need to be at a form of entertainment in order to engage young people. And I think that, that, that w might lead me to the, the thing that I said, Johnny, that you were, um, were interested in, which was, I think, something I put in one of our decks is that interaction is the new content. Um, and to me, this really explains why brands who want to spend a lot of money to engage modern audiences need to move away from the model that they've had really since the beginning of social media, which is the content model, which is essentially they've found these platforms that they can deliver messages directly to people in their feeds and, and, and be more sort of uh, tuned into their audiences. Um, but uh, what and in, indeed what many what most brands found they suddenly had to do they went from making one or two big ads a year big tv ads put some ads on billboards uh, to a constant stream of content and that was a really big turnaround and agencies had to had to adapt to that as well and to, to understand what this kind of micro content was and they had to understand much better what their um role in people's lives uh what was because they would speak to them every day it's a huge thing to go to speaking to somebody with big pronouncements twice a year to speak to them every day and that was that's what we've seen uh brands grapple with and master in the last 15 years is is the um, really they became content machines but however what my premise which is something that i i, I think is true and i i think we will we see it or, already but we will see it more and more is that we, you know, the audience that brands, I'm going to speak, I'm afraid to say, I'm going to always speak from this slightly commercial point of view, because that's the business I'm in. And that's what we have to do. We have to get brands to give us money to make cool stuff. So I need to understand what, what they want to do and why they're doing it. But um, they brands always want to capture the young audience because the young audience makes culture. The young, the, you know, older audiences, yes, we're all making culture in a way, but where new culture comes from, and we live in a society that's obsessed with the new, um, it comes from the next 
tranche of young people coming through. And the, 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 the huge difference between generations that have come through before and the generations we're seeing now, Gen Z, and I've just seen the Nike calling Gen Z Alpha. I think that's Alpha might be the new one. They've made some horrible new um, uh, neologism to describe them. But anyway, they have grown up with technology uh, all around them. But what they've grown up with, especially, I think this is what why I think is really interesting. They've grown up with games. And you cannot underestimate the amount of gamers in the world. It's, I believe, the number of... If you take mobile gaming, all kinds of gaming, it's three billion. It's over three billion people. So it's um, uh, and young people. For them, it's absolutely natural to do anything in a game. There is no, there is no question of why would I do that. Games have given us everything, and kids have grown up spending not ten minutes or twenty minutes, but hours, significant portions of their lives in virtual worlds in interactive worlds in worlds where they can be other people do incredible stuff and that's who we're talking to now and so there's, it's just absolutely clear that these young people do not respond to advertising old school advertising that's people trying to sell you stuff in a long 30 second film or a minute film that you can't stop you can't interact with you can't interrogate you can't play with they simply don't, they don't, and they think it's hilarious that people would try and tell them what to do. They just think it's laughable and, and good for them. However, the brands will not be outdone. And I'm afraid to say the engine of capitalism, they, you know, it's caught people out before, it'll catch them out again. And I think the way, you know, what they're looking at is, uh, is a generation of people that cannot be caught by the conventional messaging and that what they need to do is engage them. And they can't just engage them in a sort of, meaningless stale neutered kind of way they really have to engage with the world of interactivity and the world of immersion uh, and, uh, yeah and and i think that this increasingly is where brands have to go in order to engage audiences so what we do in my line of work is create immersive interactive experiences in which in which the audience or the consumer or the target of this of this uh of this communication is not the receiver or the object of it. They are the subject. They are the, in the they are in the middle of the communication. They become a part of it, and that's what you have to do. And that's what game worlds allow us to do. But that and that's what virtual reality and augmented reality, and all of this is, you know, augmented. Sorry, I'm not a, a, a reference to augmented reality by the fact that the technology is accelerating so quickly and it's getting so good and that we carry around devices that are in, in effect can be our augmented tool to see uh, things created by computers interpolated into our view of the world. And we all know that what they want to do, what the tech companies want to do is get the phone. They want to get it here. They want to get us looking through it as much as possible because at that point, wherever we go, we can choose how we augment our world how we allow certain things to become playful in our world, depending on what we like. And the brands would like it very much for, uh, for it to be something that they're involved with. So there's this sort of, um, there's a race to, to, into, to engage people in, in this way, which is, a, is, as I say, immersive. It puts the audience at the center of it. It makes the audience a player rather than just somebody who receives these messages. Um, and, and, you know, it's it's the continuation of what we've seen in social media that I dictate the, the feed that I get. So I, di I dictate what comes into my world and it's all tuned to me. But actually this whole idea of interactivity is all based around allowing you to explore and choose the things you like. Um, and as I say, to be to be the center of it rather than to be at the periphery or rather to be a victim of it. Um, you know, I think somebody that I work with talked about how advertising used to chase people and try and corner you and trap you. Uh, and that feels very true to me, having worked in advertising, <laughs> doing in the conventional sense. This is, this is unique. You, you're asking people to come into your world. You're making it so inviting and uh, you're you make, making an incredible experience for them. It's an entirely different model um, of, of uh, a, a entirely different way of working.
I'm going to pause and take breath there because that was a little bit long. It really is continuing to evolve, though, and what and, and I think that every you know I talk about brands. It's horrible to talk about brands all the time. I'd love to be talking about creators or artists. But the thing is, artists have got the same issue is that if you just do and you must know it, if you just have a, a put a photograph on the wall, this is not to say that this photograph doesn't have the same power it always had. But people are inured and they and they and the search for the new is is a big deal. And this is this new stuff is culture making and people are drawn to it and it, it becomes um, a sort of um, it has a virality. It has a virality, the new thing. Have you done it? Have you immersed yourself? Have you put yourself in that thing? And I just, it means that we all, at the end of the day, want to be engaged much more than we ever used to be. We used to accept it. But it is a challenge for pieces for art because, you know, the feeling is if I just make a film and there's just a story, you know what I mean? Or, you know, something that's linear or whatever, can it not touch people anymore? And I just don't think that's true at all. But you, there's a feeling sometimes that the old ways of doing things aren't enough. I don't, I don't think that's true, but I think that the, where the money go, the money chases, the brands dictate where, where all this money goes. They're spending all this money to create the spectacle that we see and they're chasing this. And I feel it is a challenge for everybody to be as engaging as possible with all the competition that we have, especially with this thing of game worlds. You look up the stats, dude, if you want, I don't think I have a ready made stats. You want to look at the stats for gaming. Just understand that for people, and this is the one thing I didn't say, is that for people who have flown a spaceship, you know, saw, uh, faced the demon, wh whatever, there's no big, why would they not also socialize in that space? Why would they not buy in that space? Why would they not dress up in that space? Why would we not do it? All the other things can all be done in virtual worlds. And these and young people are just absolutely used to doing anything. Of course they're going to socialize. And the what and the thing to look at, and I'm sure you're aware of it, because it's very interesting, is Fortnite, which is this game made by Epic Games. And Epic Games are a fantastic big player in this, you know, and another word I didn't say was real time. Real time interactivity sort of just trumps sort of um turn taking, plodding, linear. Real-time action and reaction is just, it's, it's like addictive. Once you've had that, it's hard to go to go backwards. So this is where I feel the world is heading, uh, for better or for worse. Oh, what? You just fucking did it right. <laughs> Kid, kidney punch at the last second. How, just say that again. How, if the question is, how do you how do you apply this thinking to a to take it to a problem like climate change? Is that the question? Do you want me to answer it? Or do you want me? <laughs> do you want I... Yeah. Obviously, if you can solve this, I, well, I, mean, gonna... I, I can. I can tell you. A, I can tell you a fantastic idea that I had with a friend of mine. I'm going to give it out for free. Someone should make it. And actually, the. <laughs> The, the way we pitched it was sort of, um, we used, um, you know that movie, They Live? We, and actually it's all predicated on the idea of the glasses. The idea of the glasses is something to, for everyone to think about. And Apple were, I think, on the verge of releasing their glasses. And we're talking mixed reality glasses. What we're not talking about is a virtual reality headset, which already exists and is very sophisticated. What we're talking about is something you could wear walking down the street but that is actually looks like normal glasses, but actually has the ability, it, it are actual mixed reality glasses, that it can take in the real world around it. It understands where it is, understands the objects out there and interpolate digital objects in, in there, whatever you want them to be. If you want zombies to be coming out of the corner shop, you can, you can, you can have that. Or if you want all the billboards in the world to just show lovely uh, paintings instead of showing horrible ads, you could do that. The, the, uh, really the possibilities are endless. We all know that's where Apple, Meta, Magic Leap, uh, Samsung, 
all, all, all these people want to be the first to get you to get that because that will be will, will be the new iPhone. It will be the new smartphone, but it will actually uh, really change the world. So anyway, we I had an idea about climate change, um, which is that what if when I put the glasses on and I and I load choose to load my climate app, what I can do is see the atmospheric content of the air, I can get a direct digital readout and maybe the air could be colored slightly different in dirty areas. When I looked at some water, all the pollution data for that water, I could see, I could see it, it would, it would have a color setting that would show me that. I could look at a business over here and I could get their climate uh, uh, mark and I could look at their opposition across the street and see what their grade is. No, I'm gonna to go to these guys, they're more environmental. I could get all the data about climate and see the world through climate glasses. And I, the, the way we pitched it was like, they live, you know, the movie, they live, where you put the glasses on, you finally see the truth. It was like, finally see the truth about climate. So you fully understand and you take all that data and you turn it really gamify it to create a layer that could identify and make you, it would raise awareness. And you, maybe you only need to do it once and you go, holy fuck, I need to do more about climate change. Or maybe you wear it every day to educate yourself the degrees of it, we don't know. It was is an idea we never pitched. It's an idea my, my friend and I had, and we sort of wrote wrote a pitch deck w without having, you know, uh, it, it can absolutely be done. It can be, you know, when the glasses are there. Um, the, I, I think that the, the, you, what you can do with these technological tools is make things. When we say gamify, we can make them immersive, we can make them entertaining, we can make them, we can serve them to you in a way that makes them entirely fascinating uh, uh, and, and involves you and immerses you in it so that you understand that you're in it rather than read about it in the paper or have someone tell you about it, whatever. What if, what if we could let you see the world through through with climate change in it? What if it was visible? We'll make climate change visible. There you go. That would be an interesting way of, 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 of approaching it. I think that from that, you can extrapolate how you can make anything interesting with this sort of technology. So as, as sort of frightening as it is, I feel uh, as though there are as many interesting, good things that could come out of it, as well as the obvious uh, terrible things that can be done as, as gets done with every medium. So.